It's like, well. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it starting, but I was like, well, am I hearing it? Or? <laughs> he's still talking over there. I don't know what it is, but he's. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Didn't mean to abruptly wake you up over there. Scott had a small issue over in the back right corner. But I think we're okay. Scott, we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> Scott was coming in hot this morning. He was ready to bring it, but he's toning himself right back down. I hope you had a good week, a good weekend. What beautiful weather we've been blessed with. Amen. Does anyone like me, this beautiful weather gets you out in the yard and you start doing too much when you don't want to admit that I can't do what I used to do? And you can barely, well, that pew feels really comfortable, doesn't it? Just, it's hard to get up and move around today. I hope through this week, from our message last Sunday, that no matter where you found yourself, that you're able to hold on to this truth. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. I hope that no matter where you were, wherever this week took you, whatever your situations were, you kept your eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's what we got to do. We can't look to this world for answers. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because his amazing grace covers all of our sin, and his hand is always there to pull us up. Let's stand up this morning and proclaim and sing out that truth.
you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Father God, as we come into your presence today, Father, we come to worship you, to honor you. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that have made this decision to give this hour to you in worship and in praise. Father, we pray that your name is glorified, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. It is great seeing everyone this morning couple of announcements, and I need to look through the bulletin because I thought I could remember everything, and I was reminded that sometimes I can't remember everything. Mountain Mission Truck is coming. If you have anything you want to give away uh, next Tuesday, the 14th. Today is Holy Communion. See, I, I, I can read it, so uh, today is Holy Communion. Uh, this coming Saturday... We are serving breakfast at United Caring Shelter. Uh, we show up at 8, we feed at 9, and we walk away at 9.30. Anybody wants to help with breakfast this Saturday at 8. Uh, blood drive in two weeks on Sunday, June the 20th. And I think that is it. So... I'll look around. I'm seeing people I didn't realize had snuck in. It is great to see everybody this morning. Take 38 seconds and go say hello to somebody. On your mark, get set, go. With Momo. She's good. Take her all the way back, okay? Don't lose her. <clears throat> Praises of our King, rise 
That is what we do when we gather each Sunday morning. Let the praises of our King rise among us and let the joy of our King rise among us. I love from Psalm 33. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O oh Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Our hope is in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Amen. That's why we gather each Sunday morning. That's why each and every day, throughout our day, hopefully, the praises of our King, the joys of our Lord for what he has done for us, rises from our lives for those around us to see. Father God, it is good to be in your house this morning. It is good to proclaim as one body, one voice, the praises of our King. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. We thank you for your unfailing love. Father, you took our place. You bore our cross. You laid down your life so that we would be free, and we are so thankful. That is why we sing, we let our voices, we let our lives proclaim so others will see all that you have done for us. Father, no matter where we find ourselves as we go out this next week, may our hope be totally in you. May we seek after you to show us your ways, to guide us in truth each and every day, because our hope is in you and you alone. Father, thank you for giving us the privilege to come into your presence this morning, to lift our voices and our praises to our King. May you be honored by that, by the hearts, the thankful hearts that are gathered here today. We thank you, we love you, and all the God's people said, Amen. Amen.
For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son to save us. Whoever believes in the name of Jesus will live forever. Amen? Amen. That means we can bring all of our failures, all of our addictions, all those things we keep hidden in dark places, lay them down at the foot of the cross. This morning, tonight, any day, with open arms, he is there to receive us. You know that I like 
looking at the words that we're singing and try to figure out what scripture goes with that song. That song is pretty easy, right? Uh, what was the scripture? John 3.16. Amen. Amen. This is the part of our service where we go before God and, and with our petitions, with the prayer request, but it's also a time to celebrate, and we have a, we have a young couple here today that are celebrating their 23rd wedding anniversary, 23, 23rd, so the young couple, if you would stand up please. Oh, look at that young couple, yes. <laughs> Congratulations and praise God, praise God. As we go before God in prayer, we do have several prayer requests. Becky has asked for prayers for her niece, niece uh, Tanya. Uh, also asked that you uh, keep Mary Helm in your prayers. Uh, Mary has been in the hospital, and uh, that's Connie's sister. Ask that you keep Mary in your prayers. Um, Sharon Mattingly has been in the hospital. Ask that you keep Sharon in your prayers. Uh, continue to keep uh, Matt Cameron in your prayers, uh, Jeff Gates in your prayers. Also, Christy Green, uh, Christy is, is since back in November when she was diagnosed uh, with an inoperable brain tumor. Christy has been at church every Sunday since. Uh, and she's gone through radiation. She is now going through, and her tumor is shrinking. Uh, she is now going through chemo. And she texted yesterday and she said, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it tomorrow. Uh, the chemo is doing a number on her. Um, which, in reality, that's what it's supposed to do, right? Uh, but she is, she's really struggling. So uh, please keep Christy in, in, in your prayers. If you have prayer concerns, if you'll lift them up to the Lord. Thank you. Oh, Father God, Lord, we come before you this day on your day. And Father, we celebrate you, we honor you, we glorify you. Father, we pray. We intentionally put your name above all other names. For you are the Lord God, the creator of the ends of the earth. You created the stars. You placed them in place and you named each and every one of them. And Father, you have created each one of us. And you have placed us in this time and in this place. And Father, you were very intentional about create, creating us. And Father, we thank you for your infinite wisdom, for your infinite mercy. And Father, we come before you today. And Father, we thank you for those that are celebrating. We celebrate with them. Father, we rejoice together. And Father, for those that are going through a difficult time right now, Father, we lift them up to you. There are those that are dealing with, with physical issues. Father, there are those that are dealing with some serious emotional and psychological issues. Father, there are those that are dealing with broken hearts, broken relationships. And Father, we lift all of them up to you. Oh, Father God, we pray your divine presence in their life. Father, I thank you for those that are in the process of being healed, both physically and emotionally, spiritually. Father, we thank you for those that are in the process of, of they're in the midst of your healing touch. And Father, we thank you for those that are going to be healed tomorrow. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Susie and I had the pleasure of having 
Our two grandsons spend the night with us last night. And as our grandchildren get a little older, uh, Susie made the comment. She said, you know, it's, it's actually getting a little easier. Uh, uh, Gabe is 12 and Josh is almost 8. And we had a pleasant evening. And as we were uh, coming to church this morning, uh, during breakfast, I started singing songs to, to Josh and Gabe. Uh, I'm not sure they appreciated it. Um, hello, Mutta. Hello, Fada. Here I am at Camp Granada. Camp Granada. And then Timey Kangaroo Down Sport. Oh, yeah. They didn't, uh, I know, they didn't appreciate those at all. And then, you all may not realize it, but you know what today is? Besides Sunday? Pentecost Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. And I started singing Mississippi Squirrel Revival. <laughs> I thought that was appropriate for Pentecost Sunday. Does anybody not know the song? Do you want me to sing it to you? You don't know, you don't know the song, Mississippi Squirrel Revival? Some guy named Ray Stevens? And he captured a squirrel and he put it in a shoebox and he took it to church. Do you know the song? Oh! And he took it to church with him and the squirrel got loose during church and they had a revival. The You're not looking it up, are you? No. Oh, I thought you were going to play it. Uh, the squirrel went up Brother So-and-So's coveralls and then the squirrel went up Bertha Better Than You's dress. You remember the song? And what happened in that little sleepy town of Pascaluga? Pascalusa or whatever? What is it? Pascaluga. 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 No, not Gus. Pascaluga. Anyway, in that little ch little town in Mississippi, they had a revival. They had a Holy Spirit revival that day because of a squirrel. And tw uh, I think in the words of the song, 23 people, including the preacher, got saved that day. <laughs> Woo! About time a preacher got saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, you got to have a revival. Sometimes we have to wait on a revival, don't we? Sometimes we have to wait. The disciples, think about this, this period of time. And I am not a numbers expert as far as the Bible is concerned, but I do know there are certain numbers that just reappear consistently through the Scripture. From Jesus' resurrection... To his ascension, how long was it? 40 days and 40 nights, right? Or 40 days, right? There's that number 40. Pentecost is how long? How long did they have to wait for Pentecost? They had to wait 50 days, okay? They had to wait 50 days. And I'm going to go through some of the scriptures about the Holy Spirit. But they had to wait. They had to wait. And the word Pentecost is actually, it's, it's complicated. Even for Greek scholars, it's complicated, which we, means what for you and I? It's, it's Greek to us. But there is a connection with the word Pentecost and 50 days, and uh, that is actually, there's a, a reference in Leviticus 23, 16, about counting the days, the 50 days. Uh, and so Pentecost took place on day 50, on day 50. Uh, I want to read from Matthew chapter 3. I have several verses today. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. 
Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist is speaking. Okay, Matthew 3, 11. John the Baptist is speaking. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He, who's he? Jesus, okay? Whenever, I, whenever I'm reading scripture and it talks about he and they and them, and I'm always like, who are they talking about? So when it says, he will baptize you. He, it's referring to Jesus Christ. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So here's John the Baptist. At, if you look at Jesus' life, we know about the first 12 years of his life. From tw age 12 to age 30, there's nothing that I, that I, we know of in the scriptures about Jesus from age 12 to age 30. From 30 to 33, that was his ministry. That's when Jesus was involved in, in ministry. And he died at age 33. Well, at age 30, when Jesus began his ministry, that is when John the Baptist was in the Jordan River baptizing people. And people were asking John the Baptist, are you the Messiah? Are you the one we've been expecting and waiting on? And John said, no, it's not me. I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the one you've been waiting on. I am the forerunner. I, I'm, I'm the public relations expert. I'm the media person. I'm the one that's telling you that the Messiah is coming. And look at verse 11 here. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. That's what John was doing in the Jordan River, baptizing for repentance. But he, referring to Jesus, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So as we begin a, a brief look at Pentecost, let me remind you that it is Jesus the Christ who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. There, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit. I think there's a lot of confusion about the Holy Spirit. And I also believe that the Holy Spirit, when you talk about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit that is left out of the conversation most of the time. And I think there's several reasons for that, but there's just so much about the Holy Spirit that we're, we're, we're confused about. And so this morning, I'm not going to go into a long uh history lesson and teaching on the Holy Spirit, just a couple of scriptures to help us to have a small understanding of the Holy Spirit. But it is Jesus who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I don't know of any other reference in scripture where somebody else is baptizing with the Holy Spirit. If you ask me to baptize you, I, I, can, I can do a, my favorite window, I can do a John the Baptist. I can baptize you with water. But I cannot baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus can baptize with the Holy Spirit. And that's what John was saying here. He said, I, I, I just baptize you with water. It is Jesus who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 
And again, I'm, um, I'm not going to have every scripture up on the screen, but in John 14, verses 16 and 26, the Holy Spirit is referred to as a helper. So when we think about the Holy Spirit, what exactly does the Holy Spirit do? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? One of the purposes of the Holy Spirit, he, he is identified as a helper. And, and again, this is in John 14, verses 16 and 26. And what it says about the Holy Spirit is he will help us to remember the words of Jesus. That's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit. People are like, well, what's the Holy Spirit do? He helps us to remember the words of Jesus. How many of y'all need help with your memory? Why are your hands up? Oh, I forgot. We're, I asked you about memory. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to remember the words of Jesus. There are times when the words of Jesus come out of our mouth and we don't really know where it came from. We don't know why we said something. I know there have been times when I've said things to people and I'm like, why did I just say that? And, well, sometimes it's because I'm human and I make mistakes. But I also pray that sometimes it's the words of Jesus coming out of me that I didn't necessarily remember, but it is the Holy Spirit working through you and I as children of God. That's one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to help us to remember the Holy Spirit is a helper. In Acts chapter 1, let me go ahead and turn there. In Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 3. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period, how long, Kurt? You said it earlier. 40 days. And speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. In verse 4, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. There's that word again but to wait. They had to wait. Do you all have trouble with waiting? I was at a stoplight the other day, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and there was no traffic coming the other direction, and I waited, and finally, I made the executive decision that the light was malfunctioning. I mean, how long do you wait? There was no traffic coming. So finally, I just went ahead and made my, I went through on the red light and made my turn and went on. And I glanced in my rear view mirror and what happened? The light switched. If I just would have waited another 10 seconds. Welcome to, yeah, I know, that's the world we live in. Gathering them together. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. Which, he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or epics, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Verse 8. What a powerful, powerful verse. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. They had to wait for the Holy Spirit. 
We already know that the Holy Spirit is our helper. And the Holy Spirit helps us to remember the words of Jesus. And here we have another function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does what for you and I? It gives us power. Look at verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That you might lift 20 tons. No. What, what's the power that we receive? To be a witness. That's the power that we receive from the Holy Spirit when Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. Because we have to wait, that says to me that it is Jesus' timing as to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's according to Jesus' timetable. And when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit by Jesus and no one else, the Holy Spirit is given to us as a helper. The Holy Spirit is given to us to help us to remember the words of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is given to us to give us power to be a witness. I could stop right now. I, 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 could, just, I could go on and on and on. John chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. It says that Jesus would breathe on them and they would receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus would breathe on them. And if you know anything about Scripture, it talks about things that were created by the breath of God. And we know that it was Jesus, the Son of God, who created everything. It was through the breath of Jesus that things were created. And so it is from the breath of Jesus that we are baptized. We know that the baptism of John is by water. Whether sprinkling, immersion, it, it's by water. That's the baptism of repentance. But the baptism by Jesus of the Holy Spirit is through the breath of Jesus. That is how, that is how the, the baptism of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit is received. It's by the breath of Jesus. Acts chapter 20, verse 16. I find it interesting. It says that Paul was hurrying to get back to Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. And so th this idea of celebrating the day of Pentecost, it is not a recent phenomenon. I read earlier from Leviticus 23, 16, the day of Pentecost has been, has been a part of the Christian faith for several thousands of years. But since what took place in Acts chapter 2, which I'm going to read in a, in a moment, since that event in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost took on an even more special meaning. And so we have Paul, who's out on missionary journeys, but he's hurrying because he wants to get back to Jerusalem to be a part of the church at Jerusalem to be able to celebrate the, the feast or the festival or the celebration of Pentecost, of, of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, let's start with verse 1. Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. 
And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributing themselves. And they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Why were they speaking with other tongues? Go back to Acts 1.8. Why would they receive power? To do what? To be a witness. Okay? It all ties in together. They were going to receive the Holy Spirit by the breath of Jesus Christ himself. So that they would receive power to be a witness. So here in Jerusalem in the upper room, they are all gathered together on the day of Pentecost. Which, now keep in mind, the day of Pentecost did not start right here, 50 days after Jesus. The day of Pentecost had been celebrated for, for a long period of time. Go back to Leviticus 23, 16. And so they were there on the day of Pentecost. And it was then when Jesus decided in his timing to breathe on them the Holy Spirit. And they were able to speak in other tongues. Why were they able to speak in other tongues? To be a witness. That was the whole purpose. To be a witness. And the people that heard them speaking in other tongues, they heard them speaking in their own language so that they could understand what they were saying. That was the purpose, to be a witness. In Acts 2, 38, let me go ahead and turn to that. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said to them, these people that, were, that heard the disciples speaking in other language, and they were like, what's going on? What's happening? Acts 2.38. And Peter said to them, because they had asked, I should have, verse 37, they said, what should we do? And Peter said to them, verse 38, repent. Guys, that's for each one of us. Repent. And each of you, be baptized. Now, now notice here, there's an order. Repent. That comes first. And each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins. That's next. First is repent. Second is be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins. And then, what comes next? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You don't get the gift of the Holy Spirit if you haven't repented and received forgiveness for your sins. There's an order in which this takes place. John chapter 16. I'm running out of time, but there's, I, we could go on and on and on, but I'm trying to keep this as short as I can. John chapter 16, starting with verse 7. Jesus is speaking. And Jesus says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, 
I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. As we celebrate Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, we know that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He is our guide, our helper, our teacher. He is the one who convicts of sin. And you know the beautiful part about that? If it is the Holy Spirit that convicts of sin, you know, what, you know what that means for you and I? We can take that off of our to-do list. You realize that? We don't have to go around convicting people of sin. That's not our job. That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the empowerer. There's got to be a better word, but I couldn't think of it. He is the empowerer. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. As we celebrate Holy Communion this morning, you'll take your communion elements. You'll take the bread. Jesus took bread. He blessed that bread. He gave thanks over that bread. And what he said to those 12 men that night was, this is my body, broken for you. And what Jesus said next was, take, eat, and do this in remembrance. Likewise, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks over the cup. He blessed the cup. And he said to those 12 men, this is my blood of the new covenant. And I pray you all remember what Jesus said next. Take and drink for the forgiveness of your sins. Please stand.
Father God, our forgiveness was bought with a price. Father, I pray your blessing of forgiveness upon each and every person today. In Jesus' name, amen.